Here is a 2023 Honda Pilot Elite in crystal black pearl over brown perforated leather, all wheel drive. This is the new generation for the Pilot. It's more boxy, more rugged. And when you option a trail sport, you get increased in ground clearance by an inch, five more horsepower than the prior gen. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and the front is definitely going to have that truck-like look. The chrome bars integrate into the refreshed LED headlights and daytime runnings. LED fog lights on the bottom with the chrome that's going to surround the air pocket, and satin aluminum is going to be in the center. It definitely has more of that dynamic proportion layout. And comparing this against the Acura MDX, that increase of horsepower makes this only five less than that. You're at 93 pound-feet of torque less, but you're getting the same towing capacity. And besides that, the wheel design. It starts off with an 18-inch. This is a 20-inch multi-spoke aluminum alloys. Underneath the hood is a 3.5-liter V6 engine with 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque paired to the second generation 10-speed automatic transmission. No more nine-speed automatic transmission is set with this. Achieving 19 MPGs for the city, 25 MPGs for the highway. The suspension has been reworked. You're getting the same clearance at over seven inches. So really, the only thing that would be something that for more off-road would be the Trail Sport because you'll be getting over eight inches in which it's still not going to be quite Subaru, but I like that we have the raised roof rails because you can add tie downs. The third window, it looks more sleek, especially because of the black color. The chrome will come underneath the window trims and we get that satin aluminum that's going to bulge out the lower skirt. And going back to the Acura MDX, the refresh of this has a little bit more usability in the interior, especially when you see the second row, what we can do with that middle seat that comes out to more or less make it like captain seats. Standard LED tail lights, and I like the rework design in the back, except I kind of wish the lower bumper came out a little bit more so because it would make that rounded off look on the lower a little bit more aggressive, pushing out those dual exhaust tips. Front and rear parking sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera. Kick to open or power lift gate going into 18.6 cubic feet of storage. We have some storage on the sides here and another little tray here, which you can also unlock to take out and clean. 12 volt charger. Underneath the floor is very unique because you can fit the second row middle seat in here, or you have just a lot more storage capacity. And this is not even in the MDX, which you'll see in the interior part. Split fold, the third row in the back at a 60-40 split. Increase in cargo to 48.5 cubic feet of storage. Split fold the center seats, and that can increase cargo to over 100 cubic feet of storage, which is four cubic feet more than the prior gen. Let's go inside, start it up, so you can hear that exhaust note. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver, four-way power seat adjustment for the passenger memory, perforated leather because it's the elite trim. The Touring will just have standard leather, ventilated and heated front seats with heated rear seats that's only on the elite trim. The new Pilot headroom is not going to be a problem, nor is leg space. It's very boxy and opened up especially the way they reconfigured the center and the new dashboard layout. And what I like is it's not the Civic. You have air vents, it's not simulated all the way through. You got storage in front of the passenger. The two-tone definitely makes it more appealing. Bose 12 speaker upgraded sound system only in the Elite trim. Nine inch infotainment screen with navigation, which comes in the Touring or the Elite. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. As soon as it loads up, I can try to show you some things. Here we go, you got the pinch and the swipe. It can be a little glitchy at times, Sirius XM. Put it into reverse and you got a reverse camera with trajectory. And you can also change different camera layouts for the 360 degree reverse camera. What's really cool about the Pilot, you just push right here on the stock for your camera. Try climate control settings, a storage pocket here, USB 12 volt wireless charging pad, the gloss black comes in between. Everything's large and opened up, just no pass through. 
that is definitely a con because it has so much space, especially when you open up in here, comparing it to the MDX, this is like double the size. And you got an area here for pins. Driving mode select, push onto it, it starts off with sport, normal, econ, uh, snow, trail, sand, tow. When you have this many driving modes, really you're just gonna be using sport and normal. Leather wrap steering wheel, it's heated. Multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. Digital gauge reader that can go through an array of information for the driver. And you can also configure this to make it more sporty or more traditional by going through the customizables. And you can do it on both sides and you can change out the gauge layout. So when you click onto the gauges, you can have the round, this is the bar that we're in, and you can also have a minimal round gauge. Kind of like it this way. Heads up display, auto dimming rear view mirror with a pano moon roof. The door panels don't necessarily integrate into the dash, but I like the pattern that comes in between. Memory seats, one touch up and down for the windows. It's gonna be more sporty and two tiers of storage. For the second row headroom, not an issue, nor is leg space and you have multiple areas of storage behind both of the front seats. Third climate control, heated rear seats, USB, 12 volt air vents, and this center here is going to be soft more or less. The door panel starts with manual sunshades and you'll get the same materials that's found in the front, the pattern, soft materials, two tiers of storage. But the unique thing about this seat is you could either have it as a third seat or you can simply take it out completely and then if you're wondering where am I going to fit that seat well that's why they have thought about everything in the pilot you don't even get this in the MDX this is also reversible and it stores right inside so you don't have to leave it in your house in which now you have captain seats except you don't have anything to rest your arms or a pass-through to get into the third row sliding over to the center the floor is more or less completely flat and you have your own area for feet space but in shoulder space is also going to be good as well as headroom for the center entering into the third row push the button slide it forward and it's an easy access to get inside slide these back the rails are pushed so you will be sharing a bit of feet space this also bulges outwards cup holders here air vents on the side with usb ports in the windows are pushed back but headroom for the third row is actually really good considering this is not a large suv sliding to the center you can see leg space and feet space is going to be tight same thing with butt and shoulder space this is just for a quick commute even though the headroom is doable the refresh pilot with 285 horsepower which has five horsepower more than the prior gen 262 pound-feet of torque which is 93 pound-feet of torque less than the acura mdx major difference is really between that and this besides going into the luxury line and getting an extra year of warranty is you're getting an upgraded 12.3 non-touch screen which you'll have to use Acura True Touchpad in order to configure. Here we get the nine inch, but it's touch screen. So it does make it a lot more accessible and easy. 360 degree reverse camera and you can click it onto the fly by the stocks. I like that because I mean, when you're looking for a simplified vehicle for day in and day out use, it's practical and that's what they're doing, making it just user friendly. As for the performance, I mean, you get five more horsepower. It's about five horse, it's five horsepower less than the MDX. When you're thinking about the savings, this is something that has moved up a lot. Look at the performance. And because it's a 10 speed instead of a nine speed, the MPGs will be a little bit better. Five horsepower is not a huge difference in the sense of going, oh my God, crazy, but it's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting with the pros has to be that you are so close now to an MDX and the savings you can already tell is there. Even in the interior, you can store the second row center seat in the cargo. You can't do that in the 24 model MDX. They still haven't configured that. You'd have to leave it at home. I understand you're not getting anything really for the captain seats in the sense for armrest, but still it makes it a lot more user-friendly and 
for the third row occupants, you have just as much headroom as you would in the MDX and you have and you have just as many charging ports throughout the cabin. The disadvantage is you really need to go to the touring or the elite trim in order to get everything like this if you want to get to that luxury level. But when you're considering that every vehicle has increased in price, it's actually a bargain yet again. Another con would be there's no increase in towing capacity. It's still at the 5,000 pounds for the all wheel drive, but then going for the plus, you have a lot more room in the interior. There's no pass through, which I was already saying that's definitely a con because this is a pretty big SUV. It's larger than the prior gen and it's also wider than the prior gen in which is why you have so much more space. The exterior style, I like that box truck look because it looks more rugged and it's something that puts it right next to the MDX. Going to rivals the Subaru Ascent. The third row, it's going to be a lot more cramped. Even in the second row, it's not as long as this vehicle or as wide. Going into Toyota for the Grand Highlander, that one's going to have the most room for the back, but you're touching over 200 inches. This is still, this is right at 200 inches. So it's a little bit longer than this one. And the towing capacity is the same. Interior space for the front though, they have maximized cargo a little bit more so in the sense that you have more cubbies, but this is a deeper storage pocket. And as for the Nissan Pathfinder, the same thing for the third row, this is going to be the best in class. And the fact that you can store more things underneath the floor if you're not utilizing the storage for that center seat, which gives you an additional probably six cubic feet. Turn radius is still going to be about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. I'm smiling because this is a box on wheels. It sounds loud, it sounds powerful, and it's getting you where you need to go with a smooth drive because the suspension has been tuned. The second gen for the 10 speed automatic transmission also goes pretty decent, especially if you're using the paddle shifts, because if you go into the Acura, when you start going into the sport mode, what typically happens is sometimes it doesn't like you to downshift or upshift. It kind of wants you to hold that gear a little bit more so. Again, just more of a practical everyday use. And I like that it's not the Civic inside. It's its own interior design. And with this two-tone look, it definitely gives more of that luxury appearance. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram, leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2023 Honda Pilot Elite for our car review. It's a V6, five extra horsepower. Here we go. It's definitely going to get you to red light to red light a little bit quicker than the prior gen. And for me, the reason why I didn't go Acura MDX, because I actually just bought an SUV, was because of the touch screen. And when you're considering what you're getting with the Pilot, this is a better value. I didn't pick up a Pilot. I went to Infinity only because I wanted that luxury and the extra warranty. And it's also a nine-speed automatic transmission instead of a CVT.